Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. I'm with Yusuf Tarigami, the MLA from Kulgam in Jammu and Kashmir, a former MLA now since August 5 when Article 370 was revoked in Jammu and Kashmir and the state was converted into a union territory. Tarigami uh, has been, uh, he is in Delhi because of a habeas corpus petition that the Supreme Court allowed your party, uh, Kamri Tarigami, welcome to the print. My first question to you is that what is the situation like in Jammu and Kashmir today? It has been about six weeks since uh, Article 370 was revoked. It is horrible. Uh, unfortunately, the outside uh, world knows a little, uh, very little about what is happening in Kashmir. That's my real concern. It is uh, what it is there. It is unbelievable for many of us here. In, in, what the way? in what way is it unbelievable? Oh, it is unbelievable in the sense that we never expected that such a situation will arise here in Jammu and Kashmir. All of us know uh, that it has been terrible for the last so many decades. But the way it has been now moving or placed, uh, I think it is unprecedented. Unprecedented in the sense for the last uh, so many, uh, almost 40 days over, there is calam problem. There is no communication with each other. Telephones are off and internet is nowhere and public transport and even even the life itself is paralyzed. So what is the reaction of the Everybody is keeping very quiet. There are no protests. There are no demonstrations. You see, it has been turned out uh, into a big prison now. Huge security forces are deployed in every state of uh, the valley of Kashmir, and still you expect that protesters should, uh, people should protest and then you will listen to? But in a sense, the government is right because nobody has been killed. There have been maybe one, a few deaths from small uh, stone pelting, but even that is not sure. Certainly, certainly, and that's what I put it this way. In a big prison like Kashmir, uh, have you ever heard that uh, bullets are required to silence, uh, make the people silent? Not at all. In prisons, people behave like this. They are not allowed to speak. Now, you look at Kashmir, uh, it is only place, I think, in the whole of the uh, country where all the political shades, all the political shades, irrespective of their affiliations, they are in jail. So how many people, how many leaders from all political parties Everybody, are in jail? That is, that is what the media has tired itself. They have tried several times to ask this question and know the details from the government of India, government of Jammu and Kashmir, and the government of India, government of and Jammu and Kashmir, both, they are reluctant to uh, give the details of the detainees in different jails, both inside uh, Jammu and Kashmir and outside Jammu and Kashmir. This is unfortunate. So why yeah. was Faru why was Farooq Abdullah detained under the Public Safety Act? This is the height of what is happening in Kashmir. A person like Sheikh Farooq Abdullah, three-time Chief Minister, now Parliament mm -hmm. Member, who has been advocating uh, on behalf of India in Geneva and elsewhere in different forums of the world, he has been accused, abused by the other side of the uh, population. And now uh, he is being uh, detained and detained so arbitrarily and under a draconian law like Public Safety Act, a big shock and big surprise for, of, for all of us. But it was the uh, it was the Farooq Abdullah government and and also the PDP that had the PSA, the Public Safety Act. Why did they not revoke it? No, that's a question, different question. Earlier when Sheikh Mohammed Abdullah uh, evolved this uh, uh, new law, changed uh, Preventive Detention Act, which was in operation the year earlier, changed it into Public Safety Act. I was the first person who was the victim in 79, victim of Public Safety Act. That apart, we have the grievances with our governments, whether it was led by Sheikh Mohammed Abdullah, Farooq Abdullah, Mufti Mohammed Sayyid, and all that, what they have done, what they have not done. But my point is, we have been opposing it tooth and nail on the floor of the house and outside as well. This is draconian in nature. Even if it is uh, uh, used against a common citizen, used against now, against Farooq Abdullah, this is the height of it. So what is going to happen when Farooq and Omar Abdullah and Mahbubah Mufti, all former chief ministers, what happens when they are released? 
No, the question is, uh, first they are, not, they are to be released or not, I don't know. Uh, it's not only three chief ministers. The ministers who were working in different regimes there in Jammu and Kashmir, be it Congress, PDP, National Conference, People's Democratic Front, and other smaller groups. Why has this been done? You ask the government of India, because they are the, they have uh, this, this type of a plan where they are terribly, terribly disturbed of the reaction from the people of Kashmir. That's why to uh, make it sure that there is nobody to speak against this draconian measure which they have taken on the 5th of August, virtually, virtually uh, 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 announcing an emergency, uh, not to allow anybody to protest, not to allow anybody to speak. That is why there, all the shades of opinion are now, they, they feel threatened. And that's why they are to be controlled. And for control, the jails are the only places where they can be put in. But why was it done on the 5th of August? What was the need for abrogating uh, Article 370? Surely, you see, the question is, we have been, you know, and all of us know, uh, when uh, uh, there, was, uh, there were different prime ministers, Narishma Rao was there, who once said that Sikai is the limit on the floor of the parliament when it comes to the question of Kashmir. If peace restores through uh, granting more autonomy, and Sikha is the limit. This is what he said on the floor of the house. And this is uh, what Atal Bihari Vajpayee, he claimed, he said, that under, when certain people Insaniyat, said... Uh, no, no, not Jamhuriya, Insaniyat itself. Even uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee said that it was yes. under Insaniyat. Insaniyat. And no, the prime, pri present uh, prime minister, he said, uh, in this uh, campaigning for this uh, term, he said... Uh, uh, he said, na goli se na, uh, hum gale laga kar kashmiro ko. Not only gale, abhi unho ne kaha ki vishwaas paida karna hai. Vishwaas. Vishwaas ki baat ki hai. My only question is, to the authorities, is this the insaniyat, frame of insaniyat? Is this the sikai, of, sikai is the limit? Is this the message for the people of Kashmir? Is uh, vishwaas paida karna hai, gale lagana hai, Mr. Prime Minister, gale aise lagaya, lagaya jata hai, vishwaas aise paida kiya jate hai. Today, if not, tomorrow, you have to be accountable to the people of India. That is where I am sure. Sir, National Security Advisor Mr. Doval has said that Pakistan is responsible for this mess in Kashmir. To Pakistan, who is providing this kind of a fodder, this kind of an opportunity for those who want to destabilize the situation, who want to frighten the people of Kashmir, who want to alienate the people of Kashmir? What is what is the what is the real real ground for? So is this going to provide the fodder? Certainly, certainly what else? You see, now there is a big political vacuum by, a cow, by making a crackdown on all opinions in Jammu and Kashmir. What is the result? A big vacuum. This vacuum serves whom? None else but those who want to undermine the process of democracy in Jammu and Kashmir. But this revocation of Article 370, it is a done deal. Do you expect, do you want it to be brought back to a special status? What is, what is it no, that you want? It's a question of me. Now, I, I pose this question to every citizen of the country that today we have been snatched up from our rights. Whatever the rights have been, have been constitutionally guaranteed to the people of Kashmir, it's not just the question of special status. What status? We are just asking that they have undermined the provisions of the constitution. They have virtually assaulted the bond of relationship between Jammu and Kashmir and the union. Restore that. If you don't want to restore that, who will be harmed? The interests of the larger interest of India itself. The relationship between Kashmir and the rest of the country will be undermined. That should not happen. That's why I appeal to the democratic sections of the population here in the rest of the country. Please speak before it's too late. You think it will be too late? It will be too late because, uh, you know, today uh, people of Kashmir are humiliated. Who knows what happens uh, tomorrow in the rest of the country. So have you filed a writ petition in the Supreme Court yes, about about the Article 370? Yes, 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 because we feel that it's a constitutional coup. It's unconstitutional, uh, illegal. That's why Supreme Court is a, uh, and, uh, provides an opportunity for us and we will avail that. And we have submitted an application against both these orders, revocation of Article 370 and the disastrous act called reorganization of the state.
Why is it disastrous? It is disastrous because we want to be together. But uh, the government feels that two union territories, there will be much better administration and governance. What government of India, government of Jammu and Kashmir, what government of India and government of Jammu and Kashmir think, that is altogether contrary to what we think in Jammu and Kashmir. So you're saying that the government is not listening to the people of Jammu and Kashmir? Have they? You have it out. And that's why the arrogance and authoritarian tendencies emerging are quite visible today as far as their acts in Kashmir are quite uh, obvious. I think if not arrested, will pose a big danger for the very foundations of the republic itself. Last question, uh, Mr. Tarigami. Your party, you yourself, and the other parties in the opposition, what is your plan now? How do you take on the BJP? Certainly, certainly, certainly we will raise, we will, we will... Uh, uh, talk to the rest of the political streams here, different groups, national, regional, uh, wherever they are, who feel concerned about the emerging situation in the whole of the country, be it uh, Kashmir, economic issues, and other slowdown of economy, and livelihood issues of the people in general, certainly we will work together, try to uh, uh, forge some unity, uh, uh, so that to raise our voice effectively against authoritarian measures initiated by the government of India. Thank you, Mr. Tarigami. This is Jyoti Malhotra for The Print. Please continue to watch our YouTube channel. It's live and buzzing.